Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA Objects series. In this video we'll see the difference between object properties and methods and we'll dig into the structure to learn how to use them correctly. Properties and methods allow to get and modify the attributes and state of objects. A property is a characteristic or attribute of an object, such as for example the name, the color, etc. A method is an action that can modify the state of the object, such as for example to open, to close, to copy, etc. Both properties and methods are used after the object reference separated with a dot or period. That's the basic expression. However, most properties and methods come with additional information such as values or parameters that are added after and are used differently with a property or with a method. Let's see what's that all about. We will start with properties first. We can get the value of a property for an object, which represents some characteristic of the object, just by using the expression we've just seen, object reference dot property. So for example, application, that's the object, and the object reference as well in this case. And when adding the dot, you see, we get the list of properties and methods. Properties have a symbol of an envelope with a hand. So application dot name, returns the name of the application, which is Microsoft Excel. We usually put that information into a variable. In this case, it's a string variable. And as explained in the previous video, collections are objects themselves, so they also have properties, and we use them in the same way. So for example, we can count the number of workbooks open with workbooks, which is the collection object, dot count, which returns the number of workbooks open. Or we can get the number of worksheets in a workbook with active workbook dot worksheets dot count. And of course we could put that into a variable. These are all read-only properties. We can only get the information. We cannot set it or change it. But other are read-write properties. So we can get and also set the value of the property. That's, for example, the case of the name property of the worksheet object. We can get and also set or change the name of the worksheet. To set the value of a property, we use the equal sign after the property followed by the value. The value can be a number, a string, a boolean, and some other types, depending on the property. We'll get to that in a moment. So active sheet dot name equals new name. Or in this other example, application dot display alerts equals false. In this case, it's a boolean. And the value of a property can also be a predefined constant. For example, the visible property of the worksheet object can have one of the following constants. So sheet one dot visible equals, and we can have a hidden, very hidden, or visible. These are Excel constants for that property. The list of constants for a given property is available in the object browser, or using the automatic listing that we've seen here, or the list constants up here. We are going to see more about the object browser and all these functions in the next video. So in this example, we can hide the worksheet with the Excel sheet hidden constant. And we are using the term, but the constant also has a number associated that can be found in the object browser too. The constants usually belong to a group or enumeration list. In this case, is the Excel sheet visibility enumeration. We can see that again in the object browser. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna show quickly if we select the Excel library and we type visible, we get the different entries for, for that term, but the one we are interested in is the property of the worksheet object, this one here. Then you see it's been selected here and the visible property is here. If we click the visible property, it says it's a property as an Excel sheet visibility. If I click here, we get the three constants that we've just seen before. Another important concept about properties is that a property of an object can return another object. For example, the worksheet property of the application object returns a worksheet object which can then respond to other properties and methods specific to the worksheet object. 
And as we saw in the previous video in this series, the worksheet object does not need the application to precede the object reference and can be used without a fully qualified reference. So application dot worksheets, you see we can reference worksheet one and say copy. And of course we can also use that without the application reference. But let's see another example. The font property of the range object returns a font object that has other properties such as name, size, color, etc. that determine the characteristic of the font in a range. So if we write range A1D4 and add the dot, we get the list of properties and methods, and we can find here the font property. And when adding the font property, it's going to return a font object that has other properties. So if I add a dot here, we get color, font style, name, size. So we can set the size, for example, equals 20. Now let's talk about method. A method can modify the state of an object. It can change its properties or it can make it perform some action. We apply a method to an object, as explained earlier, with object reference dot method. So for example, range a1 d4 dot select. The methods have a different symbol than the properties to be recognized in the list. And the same applies to a collection object. So for example, worksheets dot add. But methods often accept one or more arguments to further specify the action to perform. The arguments go after the method, separated with a space, and each of them is separated by a comma. So for example, with this add method here, we can specify to add the worksheet before another worksheet. So when we add a space after the method here, we get the list of parameters. As you see, the first parameter is before. So if we write here worksheets one, it's going to add the new worksheet before the worksheet one, the, the first worksheet. Or we can add it after a given worksheet. So that's the second parameter here. So if I remove this and I add a comma, you see it moved to the second parameter. Now we can add the worksheet reference. That could be worksheets. worksheets count, and that would be the last worksheet. That's the same reference we've used before, worksheet one. Uh, one, two, three, in this case, worksheets.count is giving the index number of the last worksheet. So with this, we are adding the new worksheet after the last worksheet. We can also add several worksheets using count. If I add another comma, we have the count parameter, and we can, for example, add two worksheets. But there is another way methods can take arguments, which is often more convenient, as it is more readable and self-explanatory. That's writing the parameter for each of the arguments taken, followed by a column with the equal sign, along with the value of the argument. Those are the parameters that pop up while calling when writing the method of a qualified object. So in this example here, we could also write count column equals two. That's adding two worksheets. Or we can specify after with the after parameter equals whatever worksheet we want to reference here and separating each parameter with a comma. And the value of an argument can be a number, a string, an object, like in this case, a Boolean, or also a predefined constant, as we've seen for the values of properties. For example, if we add a new sheet, sheets add, and adding a space, we see here the parameters, before, after, count, type, and we can, for example, set the type of the sheet with column equal to Excel chart. 
An Excel chart is one of the constants in the Excel sheet type enumeration, which is available in the Excel library. That's why it starts with XL. But it can also be a constant in the Office library. Those start with MSO. For example, sheet1.shapes, add shape, and after adding a space, we see here the auto shape type, which can be one in this group, MSO auto shape type, and they also have a number associated, and you can see that in the object browser. But I have the list with description also in the Excel VBA objects guide here. If we scroll to Appendix C, here's the MSO shape type enumeration, and below is the MSO auto shape type enumeration. Another thing we have here in Appendix B is the list of all properties and methods for, for the objects that are covered in the guide. So you can see here the full list, for example, for the application object, all those properties apply to the ap application object, then the methods and events. And as you see, there's a difference between the workbooks collection object with properties and methods and the workbook object. And we can see that for all, all the other. So in this case, let's add a rectangle, MSO shape rectangle. And this needs other parameters to specify the position and the dimensions. You see here the left, top, width, and height. So we, we should specify those numbers also. And one last thing about methods is that we often assign the outcome or result of a method to a variable, most likely an object variable. In that case, the arguments must be placed in parentheses after the method, regardless of the way they are added, with or without the parameter. So that would be for the worksheet example we've seen earlier. Dean WS as a worksheet and set WS equals worksheets add after worksheets sheet one, for example, and close the parentheses. So in this case, it must be inside the parentheses. And then with the new worksheet, we can change the name, for example. So WS name equals my new WS. And that was it for today's video about object properties and methods. I hope that was useful and thanks for watching.